We are back on the Car Make Revive Drift Cart Series. Today we are up to episode five where we're getting stuck into the wiring. We're gonna put all the things in your cart to make it go broom. Spark, spark. Spark, spark. <laughs> Flare no, it up. No. Wiring. Right now, I am holding one of the electric start wiring kits. Matthew has got one of the non electric start wiring kits. As you can see, they're slightly different in size. The price of them differs also. For a non-electric start wiring kit, such as this kit, 10 to $15 Australian on eBay. For the electric start wiring kit that I'm holding, about 15 to $35 Australian on eBay. Uh, we're gonna open up these two wiring kits, plug them together, put them on the bench, show you the difference between the two, and then we'll show you how to fit them to your revived drift cut. We are gonna open up the two kits. If they're not plugged together, we're gonna plug them together, sit them on the bench, and show you guys the difference, and then run through what each of the components does. So, let's open them up. Laid out in front of us, we have the two fully assembled wiring looms. We have the non-electric start wiring loom uh, closest to Matt and the electric start wiring loom closest to myself. It's worth noting at this point that, as well that these wiring looms are meant for pit bikes. Uh, you can buy them for quad bikes. We don't recommend using quad bike wiring looms as they have indicators, brake lights, a whole bunch of other stuff brake pedal switch that is very difficult to wire up and nowhere near as simple. So, for the sake of everything that we're gonna be showing you in this video, it is pit bike wiring loom kits. Again, electric start and non-electric start. If we take a quick look, you will notice straight away that the non-electric start kit has a lot less going on than the electric start kit. Obviously, the non-electric start kit is the cheapest way to go. You're not going to need a battery, as we've mentioned in previous videos. Your cart's going to end up a little bit lighter. There's not as much wiring. You're not going to need the battery. You're not going to need that battery tray. We're going to run through now and show you some of the basic components of the kit. Then we're going to show you how to fit your electric start kit. The non-electric start kit will be fitted pretty much the same. It obviously, just has a few less components that you're not going to have to mount. If we have a look at the non-electric start kit, we have the ignition coil and lead. We have three wires that need to be plugged into the engine. Most engines that you buy are gonna have five wires coming out of them. They're all color coded. In this case, there's a black, red, a green, and a blue. There'll be some kind of blue wire, some kind of black, red, and some kind of green wire on your engine. These plug into them. If you're using the non-electric start wiring kit, you'll probably also have coming out of your engine a yellow wire and a white wire or two yellow wires. These won't be needed. Also on that non-electric start kit, we have the CDI module here and the kill switch, which will mount up on the front of the frame to be able to kill the engine or turn the engine off. That's about it for the non-electric start kit. Let's have a look now at the components in the electric start wiring kit. Closest to me, we have the ignition coil and lead. We have the key barrel with key. We have the CDI module, the voltage regulator. We have a... Starter solenoid. Yeah, it's one of them. Starter solenoid. Uh, power from the battery, earth. And we have the kill as well as start button that will be needed obviously on both kits, but in the pro car kit later on in a later video, we're gonna show you how to replace with this with the dash panel. Also comes with an inline fuse. Oh yeah. That you miss. There's a fuse here too. Also on that electric start wiring loom kit that we've got laid out, it has this group 
or bunch of wires that are going to connect to the engine and the colors of these wires are going to be a blue wire, some kind of red, black or red wire, a green wire, a white wire and a yellow wire. And on some kits this may be two yellow wires and no white wire. These will directly plug into the engine. So we've got our full electric start wiring kit all plugged together, laid out in the bench. We recommend before you fit it to your one of your carts that you plug everything in, making sure that they plug in to the right plug. A lot of the wires are color coded and you know, such as the two wires here that go to the ignition coil. There's a black wire to a black wire and a green wire to a green wire. These could easily be plugged in the wrong way. Take some care and make sure that the right colors plug together. You'll be sorted. You'll be sweet. Before we fit this, there's a couple of things we need to do to prepare it. We are going to just slice off the rubber boot that covers the start solenoid. Don't cut through the wiring. We actually need that part for later. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good kick. Yeah, it was square <laughs> Dude, on. It went, yeah. Shut up. I used to play for the stars, mate. So we've cut the rubber boot off the start solenoid. We're going to keep this and fit it later. Don't kick it across the room. We're just place it to one side. Right there, Matthew. The next thing we need to do is there's a rubber boot covering the power terminal. We're going to pull this rubber boot off. While you're at it, you can probably pull the rubber boot off the earth. We're going to keep those two rubber boots to cover the power cables later when we fit them to the battery. The two earth terminals won't need to be touched. On the power side of most of these looms, both the small power wire that runs through the fuse and the large power wire have been crimped together. We don't actually want this large power wire. In some looms, there may be two terminals. In that case, we just remove this larger cable. So I'll show you how to do that. We're just going to snip it off near the terminal. Don't cut the terminal off. So I still have my small power cable with the fuse with the ring terminal. And then the rest of that power cable, we're just going to pull out. So it'll look something like that. In this case, we don't need this piece. Can I kick that one? kick it? Yeah. Get out of here, you dog. Excellent. What to do without you? Oh, I honestly don't know. We've removed the boot from the start solenoid. We've modified our power cable. The rest of our loom is ready to go. We're going to pick this up and transfer it over to our pro cut. Now, if you're fitting this to the pro cart or to the basic cart, it's going to be basically exactly the same. Let's have a look at that. One of the first things that we need to do in order to get ready to fitting the wiring is fit this key barrel mount that's supplied in both the kits. This key barrel mount is going to sit down behind this bracket here. So we're going to need to undo the reservoir just here. In order to fit that key barrel mount, we're also going to need this M6 by 18 millimeter long socket head bolt and this M6 nylock nut. So Matt's going to fit that right now. So we're just removing the brake mask cylinder reservoir as it shares the same bracket. So he's just going to set the bracket behind, or the, sorry, the key mount behind this bracket and put the bolt through. So we're just placing the two M6 by 18 millimeter long bolts through the bracket on the frame, through the key mount. This front one is going to go through the reservoir as well with the nylock nut on the back. So there's not much room, obviously, in 
most of the areas in this cart, so obviously take your time. So we're gonna run you through where each of the components uh, involved in the wiring are able to sit on the floor of the cart. It's worth noting this is only a rough view of where they can go. If your particular wiring happens to sit comfortably in a slightly different position, that's all fine. Obviously, all you want to be, care of, be careful of is that the wiring doesn't protrude above where the floor uh, needs to sit and that the, none of the wires are gonna get snagged by any of the sharp edges on either the floor pan or the floor plate. One of the first parts that we wanna fit is this CDI module. Now, the shape of this between different kits is gonna vary. The one thing that's gonna stay the same is the plug. Pretty much all of these CDI units come with this little rubber boot, and on this rubber boot, there's a couple of different little slotted kind of mounting holes. It doesn't matter necessarily which one of them we use. The main thing is that we have this CDI unit sitting either on the back of this tab in the floor, or we could have it in the front of that tab in the floor. This could be if you're running oil core lines up the side of the frame here, that would keep it out of the way. So I'm gonna take my CDI unit, I'm gonna slide my rubber boot over the top. I'm then going to slide that down over the tab on the frame. I now have my CDI unit fitted on the supplied tab. One of the next things that we're going to look at where it can be placed is the start solenoid that looks like such. We need to take extra care when we place this as one of these terminals is going to have live power or 12 volts constant power to it all the time. If that terminal happens to touch any metal, that's just a bad day. It's going to arc out, it's going to create problems. We don't want that to be the case. So I'm going to take this solenoid. There's two pegs mounted just here, Matthew. Yep. That stick up out of the frame and the start solenoid happens to nestle down between the two of those. Now, if yours happens to fit slightly loose like this one, I could close or squeeze these two brackets together some and then kind of fit my solenoid back into place. And it should be a nice firm fit between these two brackets. Later on when we actually fit this to our completed wiring, we will put the rubber supplied boot back over this and tape it with quite a fair bit of uh, insulation tape so that neither of these terminals could touch anything important. Next we have our kill switch with our start button. This has a bracket on the back of it with two Phillips head screws. We're gonna remove those two screws and the bracket. This is gonna mount just here to the bar and look something like this. It is worth noting that later on with the ProCart kit, this will be replaced with the dash panel, but in the meantime, you can mount it like this, at least that way you can ride your cart. So I'm gonna remove the two Phillips head screws. Flip that over. Thank you, Matthew. So we've mounted our kill switch with our start button. This lead will run down and behind this front fl uh, floor brace. You can use a bit of a uh, insulation tape or a zip tie to hold it to this bar and just here if you wish. So I'm gonna grab something and I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna use a little bit of insulation tape just to attach it to that bar so it doesn't flop about.
Obviously, you could use a zip tie if that pleases you better. That's now mounted in place. You could mount this switch either on the right side or the left side. It's really not going to make any difference. So we've got our CDI mounted, our starter solenoid, our kill switch with start button. We also have a couple more bits and pieces. So have the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator can sit in a whole bunch of different spots. There is a fair bit of free room on this side of the frame. And you'll notice there's a bunch of small square holes where it could be bolted in place. It doesn't really matter as long as it's held down firmly and it doesn't flop about. So as we just mentioned, the voltage regulator could be mounted on in this location, could be spun like that, could be mounted here, could come over and use that hole if we move the CDI. For this particular one, we're going to mount it to this square hole in the frame and we're going to use an M6 coach bolt and an M6 nylock nut. So this is going to come up through the frame and locate in the square hole. We'll place the CDI over the top and tighten the nut up. So I've got our M6 coach bolt coming up through the bottom. It has a bit of length on it. This coach bolt or the rest of this thread later on is going to be used as an earthing point uh, for the different earthing ring terminals in our wiring kit. The next thing we're going to fit is our ignition barrel with key. Matt previously mounted the ignition uh, barrel mount or bracket just over here. Our barrel has a little uh, kind of, you could say detent on the back of it or a little ridge or lip. That lip there is going to locate into the lip on the bracket and then we're going to push it in and clip it in place. So I'm going to feed the plug through. I can feel that that's the right way and the key out so everybody can see. My key barrel is now fitted. When we originally fitted the engine to our Pro Cart and our Basic Cart kit, attached to the engine is this long red cable that comes off the starter motor. Now this is the power cable to the starter motor, obviously to start the engine. It generally comes way too long. You could wrap this up or loop it around in order to get to our starter solenoid terminal, of which terminal it doesn't matter. Or in the case of what I'm about to do, I'm gonna cut this about halfway and I'm gonna crimp a new terminal onto it and we're gonna to cut to that footage. Let's do a quick recap and have a look at the different components and where we've mounted them to the frame. Again, they don't necessarily have to mount exactly where we've put them. The main thing is that they are mounted firmly. And in the case of the starter solenoid, that the terminals are well protected and not going to arc out against something. So we have our CDI unit mounted over here on the supplied bracket that's standing out vertically our voltage regulator that's tightened down with a bolt here, our starter solenoid sitting between these two vertical brackets on the frame, our key barrel has been clipped through the key barrel bracket, we shortened the wire that comes off the starter motor on our engine, we fitted our ignition kill switch and start button, and lastly we have these five wires that are coming out of the engine, they're obviously going to attach to the loom that we're about to plug in.
The last thing that we're going to fit to our cart will be the coil and spark plug lead. This is going to mount to, there's three holes on the side of the accelerator pedal bracket, the middle hole of which will take the stud that's on the coil. So I'm going to take my coil, placing the stud through that hole. Now I could either use a M6 nylock nut that's supplied, or I could use one of the flanged M6 six nuts to mount that coil. I'm going to use probably both. So I'm going to put a M6 flanged nut on first, if I can get it started, which is super fiddly. You really want to pick it up, eh? Yeah, He's like. Wanted to help a brother out. So I put that M6 flange nut on first. I'm gonna grab my spanner and tighten it up. And just to make sure that doesn't go anywhere, I'm gonna put an M6 nylock nut on also. The nylock helping it to not come loose. So we've mounted our coil, we've fitted a M6 flange nut, tighten that up, and then an M6 nylock nut, which will keep the whole lot tight. We then have our spark plug lead coming off that. I'm going to plug it onto the spark plug. A little bit of something like that. You get that, Matt? Mm-hmm. Look at that. We'll do a quick recap now of all the different bits that we've fitted. We fitted our CDI, our voltage regulator, our starter solenoid, our ignition barrel and ignition barrel bracket. We shortened our starter positive cable. We fitted our ignition kill switch with start button and attached it to the frame. And we also finished, uh, fitted our coil and then plug the spark plug lead onto the spark plug. At this point, we're now ready to fit the bulk rest of the wiring. Now that we've fitted all the components to the frame, we're gonna place the bulk rest of the wiring in place. So the ring terminal on the end here, we're gonna fit to the boss on the side of the motor and Matt's gonna bolt that in place. So we come down here. Yeah, the bolt we're going to use is a socket head cap screw M6 by 18 mil. So we've attached the earth terminal in the wiring loom to the side of the engine. We now want to plug in those five colored wires on the loom to the five colored wires coming out of the engine. Most of these are going to match up. The only two different ones, in the case of the engine, there's two yellows and in the loom, there's a yellow and a white. It doesn't matter which one, they, one these plug into as long as they're plugged together. So I'm going to start with green first plug our two terminals together. So be careful when you're plugging these together, the terminals can be rather delicate, I suppose, and you can damage the terminal. So anyway, two green terminals are together, grab the blue and the blue. This one has a blue with a white stripe and this one has a blue with a white stripe. Sometimes they're just blue. Plug them together, making sure the insulating covers are covering the terminal. Grab the red and black. In the case of this wiring loom, it's a red with black stripe. And plug it together. Take the yellow, I'm gonna plug a yellow into the white. This is actually the charging circuit. And again, it doesn't matter if the yellow plugs into the white or the white plugs into the yellow, it doesn't matter. Or it's yellow to yellow or yellow to white. Or... And lastly, the yellow to yellow in this case. 
So we have our five wires from the engine and the five wires from the wiring loom all plugged together. If this was a non-electric start engine, there'd only be three wires. The two yellow wires or the yellow and white wire wouldn't be needed. Okay, while we're at this particular point of the wiring, there's a four pin plug here. This four pin plug is gonna attach to the key barrel, just here. Line up the clip. It's worth noting when you plug these in, you need to be careful. Don't kind of wiggle them together. The terminals inside the plug are very little and generally very cheap. And if you ram them together or wiggle them while you're fitting them, you can quite often damage the terminals inside the plug. Anyway, let's fit these two. And, uh, got that plugged together. I'm now gonna sit the wiring alongside of my cart. Really at this point, we just wanna match up a plug with a component and have it sitting as neatly as possible. You may plug the entire wiring in and then look at it and think you could make one thing neater by unplugging it and putting it under another component and plugging it back in. There's no hard and fast way to plug everything in as long as it sits neat, low, and it's not gonna be snagged or rubbed on something. Next thing I'm gonna plug in is, let's go, I've got a two pin plug here, which is for my starter solenoid. Clip it together. I'm gonna find the plug for my voltage regulator, which is this large plug, pull it over. Plug it in. I then have this six pin plug, which is gonna be for my CDI unit. At this point, I can see that a lot of these wires are running over the top of my spark plug lead. I'm just gonna unplug that. I'm just neaten this part up by running it over the top. I place the other black ring-ended terminal from the earth that's coming from the engine, as well as this green ring end, which is also the earth from the wiring loom. We're gonna place those over the top of the bolt that comes up through the voltage regulator. So this is gonna be our earthing post that everything that needs to be earthed for the motor is gonna to attach to. Okay, I'm gonna plug in the two wires to the ignition coil. The ones on the wiring, there is a green and then there is a black with yellow line or yellow trace. And that's gonna plug into on the ignition coil, a black with a yellow trace and a green. So bullet terminals, we're gonna go green to green. These are very tight. And then we're gonna go black with the yellow to black with the yellow. Okay, I'm gonna press them down so they're nice and out of the way. Something like that. We can also attach the cable here that has two plugs on it. We have a green and a black with a white trace. And we have a black and a red with a yellow trace. They're gonna come over the other side and plug into the wiring from the kill switch. It's really important when you do this that you plug the green to green and black with the white trace to the black with the white trace. The next one is yellow with a red trace to a yellow with a red trace and black to black. So 
we have those two plugs like such. These two plugs are identical and it's very easy to plug these in wrong. Don't do that. Okay, everything's plugged in on our cart. The last thing we need to do is basically run power from the battery to the start solenoid and attach our main power feed to our wiring loom. Then from the other side of the start solenoid to the power to the starter motor. I might move some of the cabling for when I do that just to give a clear idea and we'll get Matthew on the GoPro to get nice and close so you can guys get, can get a clear idea of what we're doing. Supplied in the kit is your battery extension lead. Before we attach this to the battery, we're gonna attach the positive or red lead to one side of the starter solenoid. It doesn't matter which side it is, as long as we also attach the main power feed or this thin red wire that is in the main wiring loom. I'm gonna come around the other side. I might get Matthew to film down from this way. So I'm gonna take one end of my battery extension cable, my red lead of it, the small red lead from the wiring loom, placing them together, and we're gonna put them onto the closest terminal of the starter solenoid. Again, it doesn't matter which terminal, as long as both of these go onto one. Grab a 10 mil spanner and tighten that up. Okay, the next thing we need to do is this wire that came from the starter motor that we cut down and put a new terminal on. That needs to go to the opposite terminal on our starter solenoid. So in this case, I might come underneath this, over, and onto that terminal. So our wiring to our starter solenoid is gonna look like that. Just to quickly recap, because this is probably the most confusing part for a lot of people. The battery extension lead from the battery, the red positive cable with the small positive or power cable from the wiring loom to one terminal on the starter solenoid, and then the other terminal on the starter solenoid to the power wire to the starter motor. Obviously, before we test this, we we're gonna need to put the rubber boot back over the top and tape it in place with plenty of insulation tape. So if I'm happy with how that sits, we can cover this up and tape it down. So we're happy with how our start solenoid sits, where our power cables are attached to. We've tightened down the nuts, holding them in place. Don't over crank these up, otherwise you could damage the start solenoid just firm enough that they're not gonna come loose. We've now got our rubber boot. We're gonna place that over the top of the start solenoid. Like that to cover the terminals. And then I'm gonna take a roll of insulation tape and wrap this up, making sure there's no areas that could touch bare metal. We've now taped up our stutter solenoid, making sure there's no bare terminals. It's sitting nice and tight between the two brackets so it can't move. And I've laid that down so that there's nothing sitting up too high when we put the floor in. Some people may think this would sit neater if it was standing up. It will sit up too tall and the terminals could touch on the floor plate, which would cause them to arc out. So in this case, and pretty much most of the time, it's gonna to need to be laid down on its side to keep those terminals out of the way. The last thing for the battery extension cable is this earth terminal, which is gonna come across to the other side of the frame where we had that main earth pin, and it's gonna sit on the top, and we're gonna put another nylock nut on top. We've run that 
earth terminal from our battery extension lead nice and neatly around here, making sure it's out of the way. Place it on top of the earthing post or earthing point here where the rest of the earths have gone. And we're gonna place a, another M6 nylock nut on top and tighten that down. Okay, we can come around the front, running our extension lead, tucked down beside the frame, up underneath our floor brace. Tuck that in with the fuel line sitting. So we're now ready to mount our positive and negative terminals from our battery extension cable to our battery. When we do this, we can use the two supplied rubber grommets that we took off the wiring loom originally, placing these over the wiring. This could be a bit fiddly. Now that we've placed the two insulating boots onto our battery extension cable, we can put the battery uh, cable onto the battery. We wanna put our positive lead onto our positive post on our battery first, and then we're gonna put the negative lead onto the negative post of the battery. When we put the negative on second, if it starts to spark at all for any reason, just quickly remove it. The chances are you need to go back through the wiring and double check it and see if there's anywhere that hasn't been plugged in right or is rubbed through and is touching on the frame. Because we place the positive on first without having the negative attached to the battery, when we're tightening up that positive battery terminal, we don't have to worry about the spanner touching the terminal and touching the frame and arcing out because the earth, the earth isn't connected. So now that we've got that positive hooked up, we're gonna hook up the earth. We've got both our positive and our negative on our battery extension cable attached to our battery. We can now tuck the lead up behind the frame here and we're gonna place a zip tie around this side of the frame and that lead just to hold it in place. Theoretically now, all our wiring for the cart is finished. All our components are plugged in. Our all earth terminals are all attached over here via our voltage regulator bolt. We have an earth attached to the side of the cylinder head. Our key barrel's plugged in, our engine's plugged in, our battery's attached. We don't necessarily want to start it because we don't have any exhaust on it, but if we were to place the key in, turn it on, and give the starter a little bit of a bump, we should be able to hear the engine just turn over. So we're gonna place the key in. Turn the key on. Come over here and press the starter. The engine's turning over. At this point, we should have it pretty much right. So we'll turn the key off, take the key out. We now need to fit the accelerator cable and the clutch cable. The first one that we're gonna fit now is the accelerator cable. So we're gonna have this threaded adjustment end at the pedal and the other end here is gonna to go to the carburetor. So we're gonna take this small narrow end and we're gonna pass it down and through a slot in the frame. Matthew will be able to show that on the GoPro. So through this slot here in the frame, and then come, they're gonna come up beside the motor here. All right. Yep. Up beside there. And this end now we need to fit to the top of the carburetor. In the case of this carburetor, it is held on by two small socket head bolts. I'm gonna undo those two socket head and we'll have a look at the inside of this carburetor. These are spring loaded, so apply a little bit of pressure as you undo the top.
Now, as I go to fit the accelerator cable to this part of the carburetor, you need to take special uh, care with the order that each of the pieces is in as you pull it apart. It's very easy to pull a whole lot apart and then not know where the pieces go. So let's lift this out. Got this and then I've got my slide just here. So when it goes back together, it's gonna look something like that. So our cable is gonna come down through the top, through this upper hat, down through the spring, and the nib on the end of my cable, once I pull this out, is gonna locate in this particular carburetor, in this recess, in the bottom of the slide. So, I'm gonna place the bottom part of this carburetor, just there for the moment. Grab my accelerator cable, feed it down through from the top, Give it a bit of a wiggle, all the way through, out the bottom, Now, I'm gonna use my other hand to compress this spring slightly. And then I'm gonna grab my slide, place the cable through the slide, hook it in, and then release the upper part of the carburetor mechanism. So it's gonna look something like that. Okay, so now that we've got our accelerator cable sitting through the upper mechanism and into our slide, Let's carefully place that back into our carburetor and put the top cap on. Now this top cap is obviously attached via these two socket head bolts, but a lot of the carburetors, this top cap will just screw into place. Other than that, they are mostly the same. Okay, so we've run our accelerator cable through the frame, up beside the engine, clear of the engine, over the top. We pulled apart the top of our carburetor, fitted the cable nib to the slide, reassembled the top of the carburetor. We now need to attach the adjustment end to our accelerator pedal. So the first thing we want to do is sit our accelerator cable over the top of where it's going to screw in to our pedal. And we can see by looking at this, that this particular carburetor, because they're all different, wants the cable to sit in this hole on the pedal. So I'm gonna hook my cable through that hole in the pedal, pulling it back and screwing the adjustment into the threaded boss on the accelerator pedal mount. So I haven't tightened up the locking adjustment. We want to now check that there's a little bit of free play in the pedal if you look over the top. If I pull on this and then I possibly look in the front of the carburetor, if you look down the front, as I possibly move on that, I want to make sure there's a little bit of free play. So let's come back to the pedal. I'm pretty sure I can feel that that is pulling straight away. So I'm now going to wind a little bit of adjustment or put a bit more slack into the cable. And now again, if I press that pedal, there's a little bit of free play at the start. The only other thing that we want to check for is that when we go, if you come in this way, when we go to full throttle on the pedal here, that is where the pedal comes down level with this front floor brace, that the slide inside the carburetor doesn't go past its uppermost point. So, easy way to do that without the air filter fitted is press the accelerator cable to that floor brace, put my finger inside and have a bit of a feel of where the slide is. And in this case, it hasn't gone past the top. So, I've got a little bit of free play at the start. 
I'm not overextending the slide in my carburetor. I'm happy with how this accelerator cable sits. I can now lock my locking collar. My accelerator cable now is finished. Let's fit the clutch cable. Now, because this is a manual engine cart, we want to fit the clutch cable, which is also supplied in all the kits. We have this end here with a little nylon bush on the end of the cable that's going to go to the pedal. And this end here that has the nib on it is going to go to the engine with this adjustment sitting just above the bottom of the cylinder head and in front of the seat where you're able to adjust it. So in order to fit the clutch cable, we're going to take the end that goes to the pedal with the little nylon bush on the end, place it down beside the frame. There, and through, just back up a little bit, there's a hole in the floor. Remove these cables a little bit, you might be able to see it. Through the hole in the floor. And for the moment, I just want to sit this something like that. We're now going to come over to the other side that attaches to the engine. Now, the cable nib is going to hook into, on this particular engine, this bracket on the side of the clutch lever. And then the upper part of the accelerator, uh, sorry, the clutch cable, this is going to sit into this recess on the top of the engine. So we're going to hook in the nib on the cable to the pedal there, onto that, sorry, clutch lever. Then the top part into the ha that housing or mount on the engine. So it's going to look like that. If we now go back over to the other side of our clutch cable, to where it attaches to the pedal. Okay, we're gonna place this nylon end through the hole in the pedal. The nylon bush doesn't wanna play the game, there we go. In. Now, make sure all the cables sitting together. It may be necessary to preload the clutch lever and as we pull back on this cable to get this part of the cable behind where it needs to rest on the clutch bracket. So I'm gonna pull back here as I pull up on the clutch lever on the engine and hook it in place. So I just pulled up on this clutch lever. As I pulled back, on the accelerator cable, oh, sorry, on the clutch cable here to get it to sit in the bracket. Okay, the last thing we need to do if we zoom out and have a bit of a look, we have this big loop in the top of our cable. This can be pressed down like this or we could push this around the side of the engine and tuck it out of the way. So I'm gonna tuck that in here. Not much room. There we go. So I've tucked it along up the side of the engine, around the back of the engine near the shift switch, over the top of the engine, and it comes down. Now when we put the seat on, this will just mount down flat like this. If you need to adjust the clutch later on, and the seat's mounting here, you can just pull the clutch cable forward, adjust it here, and then tuck it back under the seat. So now I come to almost the end of the video. It's the exciting part where we've finished probably one of the most daunting tasks, that is the wiring on our, this being our pro cart, which would be exactly the same as our basic cart. Obviously this being our pro cart, it will have taillight wiring and dash wiring, but this will be done at a later date. You could get to this point, fit the floor that we're, or the foot plate that we're about to fit, put the wheels on and you'd be able to ride your cart, obviously in the exhaust. And a seat. And a seat. And a wheel alignment. And a gear shifter. Oh, we've done the wheel alignment. And yeah. you've got to put the shifter on too. Yeah. 
But it's come to that time in this video when all the wiring's done, we now want to fit our floor plate to the floor of our cart. In order to fit this floor plate, we've already fitted at an earlier point these four M6 socket head bolts that we've left loose across the front of the floor brace. We then also need another two M6 by 18 millimeter long socket head bolts and two six millimeter ID large OD washers. So in order to fit my floor plate, I'm gonna hook this through in front of the cylinder head and around. I generally need to push it further towards you. Tuck it down, go through my pedals, and in the front of the floor, there's slotted holes, and I wanna drop these down over the bolts that we've left loose. Like that. Now, I wanna take the M6 by 18 socket head and flat washer, put these through the rear of the foot plate, Just do them up finger tight. Okay, I can now tighten up the four M6 socket heads along the front. In order to do this, there's two large holes underneath the floor where you can put your hand up through with a 10 mil ring end spanner to hold the nylock nut. And I can come through from the front near my bash bar with a five mil uh, Allen key in order to tighten them up. So we're gonna move the whole cart forward slightly, hold those nuts from underneath, tighten up the front with an Allen key. So I'm gonna come up underneath and hold that nylock nut, come through with my Allen key I can tighten up my bolt. So at this point I might just nip them all up and then we'll go back and tighten them. Let's do the next one. Okay, now that we've got all of these nipped up, I'm gonna go back and just tighten them up. So we've now tightened up the four bolts holding the foot plate to the front floor brace. We now can tighten up the two M6 by 18 socket head through the washers in the floor plate at the back, making sure they're relatively tight. Okay, so we've just fitted our floor plate. We need to be really, really careful that when we fitted that floor plate that we didn't pinch any of the wiring or the fuel line. So once the floor plate is fitted and all the bolts are tightened, just had to have a bit of a check around, make sure all the wiring sits loose. It hasn't been pinched. The fuel line can move. Nothing's trapped or pinched. You may also notice that we haven't taped up any of the wiring connectors and we haven't zip tied the wiring loom in place. This is because honestly, the wiring looms that we use, any wiring looms that you'll buy for your pit bike engines, from time to time you'll have problems, they'll play up. If we've just plugged them together and we have a problem, you can have a second wiring loom nearby, unplug one of the components plug in another component. If it fixes the problem, awesome. You know exactly what caused the problem. If it didn't, didn't fix the problem, go to the next component, unplug it, try changing it also. If you've taped up all the connectors, it makes it a bit of an annoying task to have to untape, then unplug, then plug it back in. Also, 
if you zip tie the wiring in place or place any clamps on it, this can preload the wiring and with all the vibration through the cart, it can put stress on the wires and break the wires. So take care when you're mounting your foot plate. Don't tape up the connectors. Don't zip tie it all down. Make sure it sits neat and it's not pinched. All right, guys, stay tuned to our next episode, which will be episode six, where we move on to fitting the exhaust, fitting the wheels, fitting the seat, putting some fuel in it, putting the gear stick on, going and doing some fat burnouts. Fat burnout. Also, remember to hit that little bell thing in my jiggy, like, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know anything else you want to know about the carts, and we'll cover it in a soon to be coming to you video. Until then, see you soon. See you soon. Pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. Um, flames. 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 <laughs> Welcome back to Comic Revive TV. Good times, great hits. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Episode five. Wait, I don't know how you'd start it off. Like west side, but five side. Five side? Yeah, I'm ready. Kid. That was confusing. Ha! You did that? You're getting better. Yeah, I did. <laughs> that's what real men do. <laughs> <laughs> I like to refer to myself as the smartest of the dumbs. <laughs> Double nutted it just to make sure it wasn't going to come. <laughs> Shut up, that was you. You <laughs> <laughs> smiling. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> you feel that you touch nipple. Oh, it's not hard to. 恐怖は敵であり、味方でもある。